Well, I think the need is going to be particularly great for homeless people in Plymouth County. Um, right now, there are currently over 600 families that are in motel rooms. And when they're in motel rooms, they don't get special services. So it's usually a mom, possibly an intact family with a, you know, two parents, and anywhere from two to five or six kids in a single room. So that situation is pretty dire. Um, with the number of foreclosures, people are also finding themselves this winter having to knock on shelter doors. I know Mainspring Father Bills turns people away every night. They actually sent us an emergency email asking for extra blankets. So even the need for very basic goods um, and services is really, really prevalent, especially as the winter is hitting. A lot of families and individuals are also going to find themselves unable to pay their heating bills. And so the need for preventive services is really great. Um, the need for people to be able to register as at risk, as one pay paycheck away from becoming homeless, is something that Plymouth County is really working on to try to coordinate a system where we have prevention services to keep people from entering the ranks of the homeless. We also have outreach services to try to get those who are living on the street into care. And then for those who are in the shelters now, try to get them moved on to permanent supportive housing. The Housing First initiative is really big in Plymouth County, um, really big at Mainspring Father Bills. And the philosophy behind that is that, number one, it's cost less, it actually costs less to put people in permanent housing than it does to provide them with emergency services for a year or even for a month. Um, but also it's the right thing to do, um, that people can't concentrate on how to better their lives or on long-term goals unless their immediate basic needs are met. So that's the philosophy behind that. Um, recently, the president of Bridgewater State College created the Homeless Task Force, or what we're now calling the Task Force to End Homelessness. And through the task force, we've been able to reach out to local service providers. We've been able to assist with the annual point-in-time count. We've also been able to assist with grants that Plymouth County is writing to help coordinate their services better. And one of those grants involves working with the uh, Quincy Weymouth Continuum of Care and to figure out how can we work together to better coordinate our efforts so that families and individuals who are placed in permanent housing are as close to their cities of origin as they possibly can be. And that's more continuous for children. You know, they don't have to switch schools for parents and individuals. They don't have to get used to a whole new set of services. It doesn't take them out of their support network. It keeps them where they're most comfortable. And the philosophy is that that's a better way of helping them to get ahead. Um, so we've been able to do that. We've also been able to involve students in doing the point in time count. Students have been to Maine Spring Father Bills, to the Family Life Center, and are really taking an active, an active stake in what happens in this community. So that's been something that's really exciting to see. We're now in our second year, and so we have big plans. One of the plans that we have underway is the Bridgewater Scholars Program, and it's modeled after the One Family Scholars Program. And basically what it does is that it accepts eligible applicants to Bridgewater and basically pays for their education. So we're working really closely with the One Family Foundation to model our program after theirs. And that's something that we hope to have up and running within the next two or three years. So that's pretty exciting. The way that One Family does it is that it's parents. So if you are a parent and you have a child that's under 18 um, and you have some demonstrated record in school, even if it's a semester, even if it's one class, you have some demonstrated record, and you apply through normal channels. You apply to Bridgewater just like anybody, anybody else would, and then one family or the Bridgewater Scholars Program would assist with tuition. They also, every month, we would provide supportive activities for the parents. So we're helping them along the way. We're providing them with a faculty mentor who can assist with advising and helping them plan their college career. And then we would also assign them with a student mentor who could help them with the day-to-day -day life of, you know, students on campus. Where do you get your books? Where do you get your meal plan? How do you arrange all that? Um, and, and one of the benefits of working so closely with one family is that they've been doing this for years. They have hundreds of scholars every year. So this is something that for them has worked very well, but there's a need for that in Plymouth County, and they think the college can really serve, and that this would be the, the center of that program. And then hopefully it would expand to other schools who are willing to work with us to offer services. Um, one of the local agencies who's expressed a lot of support for this is the Old Colony Y. And Old Colony provides services for children and parents in the David John Lewison Center and the Family Life Center. So they're also set up to offer services. So whatever we can't provide on campus, we can also partner with them so that families who are, and individuals who are accepted into our program really have wraparound services that will help them succeed. 
service providers in this region are absolutely overwhelmed. They're seeing greater needs than ever before, almost across the board. They're seeing people enter shelter who never dreamed that that would be a possibility for them. They're also seeing um, people who are, you know, employed, who have families, who just lost their home simply because the cost of maintaining it was too high. And that's why they're focusing so heavily on prevention. Because, again, you know, paying for somebody's heating bill for two months is a lot less expensive. And keeping them in their home, keeping the family intact, or keeping the individual employed is much, much easier and cost-effective than having them enter the shelter system. Um, then they'll have to wait. I mean, the, the waiting list for housing is, is insane, and it's only getting worse. I mean, if we're placing families in hotels because we don't have the proper, you know, housing for them, this is something that is a huge crisis, and I think, you know, obviously our service providers are doing the best that they can, but when you have 100 beds and you have 500 people coming to your door every night, you really can't meet the need. Um, so I think we need um, certainly more permanent supportive housing, but then uh, additional beds for the emergencies that we're encountering this winter. And I think, I think most service providers in the region are going to be um, pretty much double and triple booked. So it's a very, very tough time. I think there's a lot of um, real fear in the community about, well, what are we going to do? And what facilities can we open? And how can we attempt to at least house people or get them indoors because the winter's coming? And it's, it's, it's more of a crisis now than it's been in some time.